I did release this video earlier, but have decided to re-upload it with a few extra warnings, since a lot of you pointed out that the result may be different with CPUs with lower numbers of cores. I have 6, so if you have 2 or 4, then disabling multithreading might affect your PC differently. Unfortunately, I have no systems that I can test these out on, so proceed at your own risk. Skadoodle claimed that disabling hyperthreading improved his framerate in CSGO. He has a 4-core, 8-threaded CPU, by the way. Anyway, I've tested what disabling hyperthreading does to frame rate and discovered that it increases how many I'm getting. Not by a huge amount, but it was noticeable. So what exactly is hyperthreading? Take a look at this wonderful diagram that I drew earlier. 100% accurate. Guaranteed. More cores allow for more data to be processed at the same time. But hyperthreading treats a single core as though it's two cores, potentially processing double the data. Have another beautiful diagram. Thanks to the Cat of War, who lovingly made it look prettier and more understandable than my attempt. These blocks represent data, colour-coded by the thread that processes them. On the left-hand side is video editing. It has to handle lots of small, bite-sized bits of data at the same time, so at no stage does it get bottlenecked by the core's resources. Hyperthreading is very good in these situations and performs faster than a non-hyperthreaded core. I mean, it probably won't be double the speed, but will be somewhere between the speed of one and two cores. Now take a look at the model on the right. Remember that a hyperthreaded core is still just one core in reality, so it shares the same limitations in some parts. And in CSGO's case, this shows that the data it has to process is too large for the core to handle two bits at once, resulting in a bottleneck. If this is the case, a hyperthreaded core is no faster than having a normal, non-hyperthreaded core. I hope you enjoy these diagrams. If so, then subscribe. Now onto the benchmarking. It's a lot easier to test with hyperthreading disabled, so let's start with that. I disabled it in my BIOS. I ran the FPS benchmark in CSGO with different numbers of cores enabled. You'll notice that I didn't get a result for one, and that's because it would grind my PC to a complete halt, regardless of which core I used. Seems that CSGO needs at least two cores. Just don't try running it on your PC from 2003, and you should be fine. The results were nice and simple. You can see that my frame rate went up the more cores I used. It's interesting that CSGO is optimised for more than four. I wonder how far it goes up to. This was all benchmarked on lowest everything and with multi-core rendering enabled. At no point in my testing was my frame rate better with this disabled. It would consistently halve my frame rate, regardless of the number of cores I was using and whether hyperthreading was enabled or not. Now the results with hyperthreading enabled. You can see that my PC now looks as though it has 12 cores. The proper term for this is threads, as the number of cores is still 6. But which of these are the real cores and which are the hyperthreaded fake ones? Well, it doesn't work like that. I could run a benchmark using any of these 12, and they would all be the same speed as each other. But if I tried benchmarking all 12 of them at once, then the result might only be 6 times as fast as if I was using 1. This is because of the limitations of hyperthreading. The scaling really depends on what you're benchmarking. But I'm using CSGO. Once again, using just one would crash my PC, so I started with the first two threads enabled, and then added one more every time, up to 12. And my frame rate went up a bit every time, regardless of whether I was adding a new core or the hyperthreaded part of an existing one. But even with all 12 enabled, that's all six cores and their fake hyperthreaded ones, my frame rate wasn't as fast as if I was using all six cores without their hyperthreaded ones. So yeah, hyperthreading can be difficult to get your head around, and some of the results surprise me a bit. If hyperthreaded cores are slower in CSGO than non-hyperthreaded ones, then you'd imagine that if you disabled one thread from every core that it would become faster. And it did, by just over 1%, but still wasn't as good as with hyperthreading disabled in the BIOS. I don't think that I'm knowledgeable enough to come to any further conclusions on this matter. All of my results were from a CPU limited benchmark, so you might get different if your GPU is bottlenecking your system. But I found that the more cores you have enabled, the better your frame rate. But it's still better to use cores with hyperthreading disabled than those with. And disabling CSGO's multi core rendering option always halved my frame rate. But like I said at the beginning, your system might yield different results. For example, if we compare four cores with eight hyperthreaded ones, then you'll see that eight hyperthreaded is higher. It depends on how the hyperthreading is allocated across my cores and just how scalable CSGO is but there's no way of me knowing how it will affect other computer setups. If you're interested, then please test it out for yourself, and perhaps comment with what happens, as it could help me as well to know.